Welcome and thank you for joining us today for Blockchain for Developers, building an intercompany transaction network. Because future-looking statements are inherently subject to risk and uncertainty, our reminder is that you should make any purchasing decisions or investment decisions based on products that are currently commercially available. Intercompany processing is a challenge that is faced by companies of all sizes worldwide. We at Salesforce have been looking for a way to automate this process and provide a scalable and agile solution to adjust to the dynamic regulatory environment. Today, Salesforce processes over 1,600 intercompany transactions every year. The volume and nature of these transactions is increasing rapidly as requirements and regulations become more and more complex. To manage this increasing volume and complexity, Salesforce had to dedicate 14 FTEs every year taking up 30 days of work and coordination across seven different departments. 40% of that process is still unfortunately manual in nature. We look to Salesforce blockchain to help deliver a solution that can manage the complexity of the intercompany transaction process. With Salesforce blockchain, we can create a single yet distributed source of truth that minimizes reconciliation errors, data redundancy, and latency of information. Because Salesforce blockchain is built on the customer 360 platform, we were able to seamlessly incorporate other pre-built Salesforce finance apps and enable, for example, features such as workflow to be incorporated across those applications. Because of the platform, we are also able to provide access to data across the many apps on the Salesforce platform, enabling the users to develop reporting that provides insight across processes. With Salesforce blockchain specifically, we were able to take a process that today took 14 FTEs and 30 days a year of effort down to just two employees and a few hours a year to execute. This was accomplished principally by embedding cross-validation rules within the blockchain solution and automating control checks to ensure accuracy and completeness of the transactions to be processed. Additional controls to determine key elements are present to comply with regulatory rules, for example, that contract agreements between parties are in place can also be incorporated into the blockchain. We also are able to automate regulatory compliance by enabling the generation of compliant invoices and tax reports on demand all through the blockchain platform. The blockchain platform itself helped us to eliminate the reliance on multiple sets of ledgers and subledgers by entity and simplify the infrastructure to one global subledger within the Salesforce blockchain allowing us to post to multiple general ledgers at once, regardless of which ERP system those ledger resides in. Salesforce blockchain provides us with a scalable solution and simplified infrastructure support model without compromising our control environment by ensuring the consistency and accuracy of the global intercompany process. With that, I'd like to hand this off to Madhu, who will share with you a demonstration of how this proof of concept works and how it's been able to automate our in-company process. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Doc. My name is Madhu Sila, Senior Architect on the Salesforce Business Technology team, joining you from San Francisco. Today, I'm going to walk you through what the user sees when using the intercompany transaction network application built on Salesforce blockchain. As Doc touched upon, this application was made to facilitate and settle intercompany transactions between various Salesforce entities, including new acquisitions. Let's start with setting up an all new trading entity, which represents a new partner in the blockchain network. A new business user enters their information into this form, which includes address, bank detail, currency, and the associated ledgers and accounts. If this were a new acquisition, you would be able to add multiple ledgers so journals could be generated and posted to all associated ledgers at once. Once all trading entities are configured, we can now establish relationships between them. By identifying relationships, these entities can transact with each other by capturing payment terms, tax requirements, or even trade agreements captured as file attachments. I want to pause a second and remind you that we just set up a brand new blockchain partner with relationship rules declaratively, with no code using Salesforce blockchain's out-of-the-box functionality. Let's look into a transaction. In this transaction, you can see that we received all transaction details through a workbook that includes provider and recipient information. Let's upload the workbook into the blockchain app. 
The blockchain automatically goes through all the predetermined validation rules and notifies users of the transaction success or failure. For this example, there are 11 records where there are two transactions failed and nine succeeded with a status message for each. It shows that the two failed transactions were because there was no trade agreement set up between the two entities. The app allows you to re-upload the corrected workbook and will only process transactions that have previously failed. All successful and validated transactions get recorded onto the blockchain and goes through netting and settlement process, ultimately generating journals for the entity ledger consumption. Let's add some more detail into the transaction, which are recorded as headers, lines and distributions on the blockchain. As we navigate through the header, you see that an invoice gets generated, a netting and settlement method is determined, and the transaction has been settled. We are leveraging an in-house bank for settling the intercompany transaction. The Salesforce blockchain platform by nature is immutable and enables us to be compliant and auditable. As we navigate through the lines and distributions, you can see that it has two distributions and they're all going to SFDC Global ERP. You can see this by looking at the timeline feature to see what happened behind the scenes of each transaction. Here you can see the transaction went through four stages from open to settled. From here, you can generate a PDF invoice on demand for tax purposes to meet various government guidelines, which looks like this. As a final step in the transaction process, you can generate a journal and post it to multiple ERP ledgers simultaneously through an integration with the MuleSoft integration platform. To go a little deeper into how Salesforce blockchain enabled us to create this intercompany transaction network from a developer's perspective, I'm going to hand it over to Sudeep. Thanks, Madhu, for the great demonstration. Hello, everyone. I'm Sudeep Verma, Senior Software Engineer from Salesforce Business Technology. I'm here to talk about sales, how we used Salesforce blockchain along with Salesforce platform components to develop finance intercompany application. So once you go into the, your org, go to the setups and type blockchain manager and this screen pops up and it will be initially empty, but you need to create a blockchain application with giving by name and the description. I'm not going to create a new blockchain application. I'm going to showcase what is we have created already. Once we create a uh, application in the blockchain builder, uh, automatically a namespace, a unique namespace is created and the status will be in the draft. When it is in the draft, the, there will not be any nodes created. Once you change the status to deployed, five nodes will be created for your blockchain app. Then you can create partners who can interact. So you can create using new and for this app, you can select whatever the members you want the members to be as partners then you can change initially it will be uh, in the pending state the partner has to be approved so it will be initially in the pending state and um, you can make that member as the founder and you can give the domain name as well for accessing from the external systems. In blockchain, you can create distributed objects. These distributed objects can interact with your Salesforce objects. So that is the power. So you can create this distributed object not only on the Salesforce platform you can interact, from anywhere, any other applications, you can access these distributed objects. So how to create distributed objects? First, basically you create a new, give the label, entity label, and initially the entity access will be private, but you need, to, if you want to access these entities from outside, you need to make it as public. And initially it will be in the draft state. Once you need to flip it to uh, deployed uh, so that these objects are getting deployed onto the nodes. And you can even make the object inactive. If you feel that this object is no more in use, you can make it inactive. So I will go into the whatever the objects, distributed objects I have created. Now you can create for that object, what are the fields inside that object? So this is my master data. So I have created certain fields which are required for my 
POC and you have different data types. Now I'm sh going to show this is my header intercompany transaction is my header. This is my tr transaction line which is child and distribution is the grandchildren. So header, child, grandchild. So now I can show you how this header and grandchild distributed objects are interlinked. How parent-child relationship is established. Now you can see there is a related entity field type or the data type with which you can link the master table with the child table using a related entity. Similarly on the distributions, now you can see the related entity. So this is the end, this is it is linking to header and this is linking to line. So your grandchild is related to your child and the parent. Once you create these database objects or the metadata on the blockchain, now you can go into the integrations, setups, integration, external objects. And if you click on external objects, whatever the metadata you created on the blockchain, you can see those objects you can view here on the platform. On the platform, you can see these objects will be created as external objects. These external objects are a linkage between your platform object and the blockchain. You are basically establishing a relationship between your platform and the blockchain using these external objects. And if you can see, uh, the namespace is prepended for every object you create and all external objects creates using underscore underscore X. And all the fields inside that blockchain objects you can see here. The important thing which I want to highlight here is the powerful aspect to it is that you can link your external object to the platform object like the trading entity is my master data which is re residing is a custom object residing on the platform. So that's why if you can see uh, all the custom fields will have underscore underscore C and this is my link between your indirect lookup is the data type which you can use a link between your blockchain metadata and the platform custom objects. So you have seen how easy to create blockchain application with just clicks not code and it creates fine nodes internally. Now I'm going to open a developer console and show you the Salesforce platform components which we have created. So this is a custom FX class where we are creating certain uh, batches of data, data records, where we are creating the transaction header, lines and distributions. And you can see in this FX class, we are using Sockle queries. We are also using database.insert statements. We are also using database.update statements and we are also scheduling the set of records in a batch and we are scheduling through system.schedule batch. Now I will switch to custom triggers. So in this custom trigger, what we are trying to do is we are creating the start date, end date, period date whenever the data gets populated into one of our custom staging table. Now I'm going to show you a process builder. So if you go into the setups and navigate to the process builder, then you can create one of the process builder. Whenever the data gets loaded into the uh, tax workbook staging table, we invoke a process. So the process is we are loading the data into this tax workbook when the records get created. We are not using any criteria for external ID field. Basically, we are populating the uh, ID field from the staging table onto the external ID field. Now I'm going to show you a custom report. So if you can see here, this is a custom report. 
and uh, we, we are pu pulling the fields from the blockchain transaction header lines and distribution data. And this report, we can filter uh, by GL date, uh, ERP system name, and the tax workbook. Right now, I'm pulling the data for the SFDC global ERP system. So basically, we are pull pulling this data from the blockchain and for that tax workbook and sending that uh, GL output to the Oracle ERP system. And we can export this uh, report in any format, especially in Excel or CSV format. We are exporting in a CSV format and sending to the ERP system. Thanks everyone for your time. I will now hand it over to Doc Tran. Thank you very much, Sudeep. And thank you very much, Madhu, for sharing with us all the great things about the new project and also how we were able to execute that in such a quick and efficient manner. And I thank you for your time and stay safe, everyone. Take care. Backup Enhanced Sandbox CD helps admins and developers innovate faster and reduce risk with an automated solution. Identify and anonymize your dream data set. No manual spreadsheets required. Define the exact data you want with reusable templates and built-in filters. If needed, turn off automations, then instantly seed to your desired destination. Check out Own Backup on App Exchange to learn more.